From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. A family seeking answers about the disappearance of a Cody mother. It, it all points in a very tragic direction. She hasn't been seen in a month and investigators are combing through clues. I just really hope that he won't talk. But her loved ones fear the worst. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Monday, November 27th. I'm Augusta McDonald. Katie Ferguson's family members are convinced she was murdered. Our Haley Monaco has been digging into this case and joins us now. Good morning, Haley. You talked to Katie's sister and her stepmom. What's the latest on this investigation? Good morning, Augusta. It's been over a month since Ferguson was last seen. Her disappearance is difficult for many to wrap their heads around. Family describes Katie as reliable, funny, and a loving mother to her two young daughters. Katie was a mom. She was a sister, a daughter. She was a really kind person. She had a really kind heart. Just like her, her kids, they just have like kind souls. We've always just had this bond. But Katie has not been seen or heard from in over a month the most tragic, awful thing. While first reported missing on November 2nd to Cody Police, Katie's sister, Nicole Ferguson, says her disappearance could have happened long before that. She was doing good in Alabama, and then I do think that when, you know, the ex-boyfriend came up that maybe something happened. Katie left Cody in May of this year to live with her mother in Alabama, taking her four-year-old and 11-month-old with. Family says this was an attempt to get away from her ex-boyfriend and the father of the two girls, Adam Avalis Jr. So it shocked the family when Katie asked Adam to come to Alabama just three months later. I never in a million years thought he would do something to her. I didn't. But now, I think he did. And I think it was really bad. Katie, Adam, and their two daughters started driving back to Cody in early October, but only three of them made it back. I don't think she's alive. I really don't. Katie was last seen in Arkansas around October 5th, but according to family, was not in the car when Adam was pulled over in Texas on the 9th. Then, on November 4th, the Dodge Durango that was driven back was found abandoned in a field near Cody. Two days later, Nicole watched as police searched the vehicle. Investigators told her they found bullet holes in the passenger door and a large quantity of dried blood inside. Katie's stepmom, Angela Ferguson, is trying to remain hopeful but fears the worst. It, it all points in a very tragic direction. It's just unfathomable. For now, the family says they are waiting to hear about DNA results from the blood found inside the vehicle. A family left searching for answers. I love her and I, I don't want to be negative, but I don't think she's going to come home, but I at least want her to be found. Augusta, Adam Avalis is not charged in relation to Katie's disappearance. We have not confirmed if he is a suspect. We do know he was arrested on November 8th for charges of possession of a controlled substance, unauthorized use of a vehicle, and for a previous warrant. The family is hoping he tells police what he knows about Katie's disappearance. Thank you for your reporting on this, Haley. In national headlines this morning, millions of Americans are making a mad dash for home after the long Thanksgiving weekend. However, today's travel will no doubt be less busy than yesterday. Close to 3 million passengers made it through U.S. airports on Sunday, hitting a new record. More than 7,000 flights were delayed and 46 flights were canceled across the country. After today, experts predict two relatively slow weeks before travel picks right back up ahead of the Christmas holiday. Good morning, Miller. Happy Good morning. Monday. You're traveling for Christmas this year, correct? Yeah, we're going to be we're going to try to drive it all the way down do to the Georgia. Road trip. Yeah, so we're going to try to hopefully the roads will be OK for that. But yeah, a lot of folks are going to be traveling just coming off of the holiday season. Another holiday season coming in. Yep. So a lot of traveling out there. So fingers are crossed for fingers all of us crossed for good travel yep. for the holiday. Now, if you're going to be commuting, uh, especially uh, uh, this morning, but as we get into the afternoon, this evening and tomorrow morning, if you're around the western foothills, the winds are going to be a big issue, especially if you drive a high profile vehicle. So that could be impacting your commute for the next couple of days, so just keep that in mind. I'm sure you're prepared. You know what to do. Uh, let's talk about uh, yesterday. Uh, across the weekend, it was colder than average. We got uh, 35 yesterday, a good, what, six degrees below the normal, or overnight low, a few degrees below normal as well. Top gust yesterday of 31 miles an hour. Still going to be breezy around most of the area, but those winds will be definitely whipping around the western foothills. It's been a dry month. We're in the hole for the month, still okay for the year. Look at those snow totals, really digging a hole for us, and we 
Don't have any snow in our forecast here locally. Maybe some snow in the mountains as we get to later in the weekend and across the weekend. Of course, waking up this morning to the beaver moon, our November full moon, also known as the frost moon, the freezing moon, the snow moon. It peaked earlier this morning, but still looking good out there. We've got a challenge out this morning. If anybody gets a photo, send it in. We'll try to show it off. It's named for beavers who build their winter dams this time of the year and it's a great shot there courtesy of the Stockman Pink weather cam as it's uh, shining down across Billings. 23 right now at the airport feels like 8. Winds out the southwest at about 20 miles an hour. It is a cold start this morning. Teens and 20s even some single digits down there in Gray Bowl but trying to get back to seasonal today warmer than average for the next couple of days with some of us trying to hit the 50s. We'll have a complete look at your forecast. Pretty quiet week on the way really. We'll talk about that coming up. All right, Miller, thank you so much. Okay. This morning marks the fourth and final day of an agreed upon temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in exchange for the release of hostages and prisoners. That is, unless both sides can agree to extend that pause. Yesterday, Hamas released a third group of women and children hostages that included a four-year-old Israeli-American girl. CBS's Naomi Rockham brings us the latest details. <laughs> Tearful embraces as hostages freed by Hamas reunited with family members in Israel over the weekend. Sunday, the terror group handed over a third round of hostages, this time as many as 17. Among them was four-year-old American citizen Abigail Moore Adan, whose parents were killed during the October 7th attacks. She has family and we're taking care of her. So don't worry about it. And it's very important to let her be now with the family. In a video message, the young girl's aunt thanked everyone for their support and asked for privacy. The White House says President Biden spoke with Abigail's family by phone yesterday after her release. We will not stop working until every hostage is returned to their loved ones. The president also had a call with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He says he told Biden that he would welcome an extension of the temporary ceasefire in exchange for the release of an additional 10 Israeli hostages per day. Netanyahu also says his country's fight against Hamas will restart in full force once the pause is over. Cheers erupted in the West Bank for another group of 39 Palestinians who were freed from Israeli prisons yesterday. More humanitarian aid trucks are also moving into Gaza as part of the deal. The local residents say it is not enough. The United Nations warns the region could be on the brink of famine. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. The Pentagon confirms that a U.S. Navy ship responded to the distress call of a commercial vessel under attack by armed individuals in the Gulf of Aden. The armed group attempted to flee but were captured and surrendered. The U.S. also says two ballistic missiles were fired in the direction of the two ships from Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen, though neither vessel was harmed. Also topping national headlines this morning, memorial services begin today in Georgia for former First Lady Rosalind Carter. A wreath laying will take place at Georgia Southwestern State University. Then her body will lie in repose at the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library and Museum in, in Atlanta before a funeral tomorrow. Rosalind Carter died November 19th at the age of 96. Meanwhile, in Congress, a vote could happen as early as Tuesday or Wednesday of this week to expel New York Republican George Santos. This morning, our Joe St. George looks at the chances it happens and how rare an expulsion actually is. Few members of Congress have impacted American politics more in 2023 than Congressman George Santos of New York. From what he has done to what he has allegedly not done, he has led newscasts and late night talk shows alike. The big question now, though, are his days in Congress numbered? That is certainly possible. In fact, he could be out of the House by the end of the week. A new resolution to expel him is expected to be voted on soon. And while Santos defeated a similar measure a few weeks ago, this time may be different. That's because this time the final ethics report into Santos has been released, accusing Santos of everything from financial fraud to sexual misconduct. On page four, it says, quote, Representative Santos sought to fraudulently exploit every aspect of his House candidacy for his own personal financial profit. He blatantly stole from his campaign. How rare is an expulsion from Congress? 
It's extremely rare. There's only been five in the House and 15 in the Senate since 1789. For perspective on how rare this is, we chatted with Professor Matthew Green of the Catholic University of America. He studies and teaches about Congress for a living. He says if you look at the history of expulsions in the House, three members were kicked out in the Civil War era because of Confederate ties. In modern times, only two expulsions have occurred, the last being James Traffican of Ohio back in 2002. If they lie again, I'm going to go over and kick them in a crotch. Traffican, like Santos, was eccentric, but unlike Santos, Traffican was only removed after he was convicted of bribery in the courts. That makes Santos's potential removal unprecedented. Green explained the removal process. It's pretty quick. Uh, you introduce a resolution, you, you, have a, you have a debate, you have a vote, uh, and if you have two-thirds vote, then the member's removed. It can be as quick as that. Scripps News has learned in recent days a number of lawmakers who voted to keep Santos in office just a few weeks ago have now changed their minds and want him gone. Ahead of the expected vote, Santos has said he will not seek re-election next year, and he has fought against his removal by highlighting things like letters outside his office, written by school children, thanking him for his support for Israel. I feel confident that I get to fight it and I have my day in court. For months, Santos has denied any wrongdoing, posting on X in recent days. There was no due process. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. And back here in Billings, the first day of December will be here before week's end, and that has many in town shifting their focus to Christmas. Statistics show this year getting a tree is going to cost you. The average price of a Christmas tree is up 10% from last year. However, at least one Magic City store is trying to fight back against inflation. Roots Garden Center's trees cost the same this year as they did in 2022. We've been able to mitigate some of the costs, expenses of that price point. We know that, that times are harder. I'm really grateful that here at Roots, we've been able to actually change the conversation a little bit from price to value. Nationwide, the average Christmas tree costs between $80 and $100. Once you've got a tree, it's time to put something underneath it. Q2's Kelsey Boggs has a Montana-made gift idea, perfect for the rock stars in your life. You won't find jewelry like this just anywhere. These unique Montana-made guitar pick jewelry pieces are handmade by a Billings resident. But this is just the start of Linda's crafty side. No two are ever alike. There are a lot of talented crafters in Montana who make jewelry, but you won't find anything quite like this. The bracelets I make with the guitar string. That's right. These are bracelets, earrings, and necklaces made with guitar picks and strings. I was looking for something different, and I came across some earrings that were made out of guitar picks. And I thought, oh, that's cool. There's a lot of jewelry makers out there that make beautiful jewelry, but this is something different. Linda Cosby owns Linda's Crafty Side, selling the one-of-a-kind jewelry and crocheted hats. And new stuff every day. I enjoyed being around the public and stuff, so I just... I thought, well, let's just do some craft things. I started with the earrings probably about four years ago, and I think I've had the bracelets probably two or three years now. Prices range from around $10 for earrings and necklaces to around $25 for bracelets. You can mainly find her products inside of the Maker's Market on the Billings South Side. But she's also on Facebook and travels to different craft shows and events across the state. But this is just the start. Cosby has big dreams for the future of her business. My goal is to have a camper and a truck so I can go to music festivals. That's the goal, hopefully within the next year or two. For now, she'll continue selling at her regular spots. Yeah, that was a real popular one. Like Getting ready for the busy holiday season. It's a great Christmas gift. It's unique, it's fun, and you don't have to play a guitar to enjoy them. For more information on Linda's crafty side, visit the full story on our website, ktvq.com. In Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News.